here with a world-renowned composer, Reverend Dr. Lena McLean, musical um, treasure, a national treasure, living legend here uh, in the United States and over the world. You are one of America's foremost composers. Well, I don't know about that, but... And many people don't know that uh, you have so many uh, works that are, that are published. I write a lot. I write a lot. If uh, I'm in a situation and I'm inspired, uh, I will write about it. And uh, I just love music, and so that has been my, my gift. You know, I think I started, I think I was born playing. <laughs> how, my, how old were you started, you think? Well, I think my mother, uh, she told me she got off the organ at church to go help me. So Wow, it's <laughs> in your spirit. <laughs> I have always thought maybe I was just meant to deal with music. Also, I have an uncle who is the father of gospel music. His name is Thomas A. Dorsey. He founded, actually, gospel music, black gospel music. And when I was five years old, my mother sent me to Chicago to live with him because his wife had died with their first child. And I stayed there until I was in junior high school. And he uh, had a conservatory teacher come and teach me every day by the time I was with them, and so I became a, a very excellent pianist. So music just sort of runs in the family. So, Reverend McLean, how did you come about knowing Dr. King? I grew up with Dr. King in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my father and his father were Baptist ministers, and we were children. Uh, together, and uh, that's how I knew him, you know. Before he left college and before I left for college, uh, he was a very brilliant young man, and both of us grew up under rigid governments that in Atlanta that were very prejudiced. So we grew up in a restricted society that had a lot of uh, uh, control of our movements in life. And we both had a very great understanding of understanding God and praying to God and being in church and also understanding uh, a society that was highly prejudiced. One of the reasons we're talking today is because you wrote a fantastic piece of music Thank called you. the uh, Free at Last Cantata. And uh, it's, it's a tribute to Dr. King. We just, how did you come about writing that for Dr. King? Well, the, the day Dr. King was killed, that evening I was very upset and I went to bed. I was lying down in my room, and my husband was next to me, he was asleep. And a presence came in the room, and it had its arms around Dr. King. And it said, you must write about him and put him in his proper light. And I said, I can't. And it said again, you must write about him and put him in his proper light. And um, I had this feeling you have when you are sleeping and you fall in the sleep. And I, I, I felt I was stretched out in the bed, but I felt I was above my bed. And finally I said, I'll try. And when I said, I'll try, the whole theme of the cantata went through my head. Just like boom, 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 boom. And uh, I got up, I couldn't get my husband away. I got up and I went downstairs and I started to write free at last. And the thing about it is that 
free at last is what is on his tombstone, but it was not there for about three years, until about three years later. And uh, I really feel that that was God who spoke to me to write the cantata about Dr. King. It's about a people and their problem, and the leader and his solution. The people were black people. Mm -hmm. The leader was Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and his solution was freedom. It opens with uh, one of the most elegant uh, Negro spirituals, Old Freedom, and the soprano sings a high. Mm -hmm. started off with the lament of black people coming out of slavery. Oh, freedom. So, you know, A long ways from home. From home. Uh, really eloquently for uh, asking for freedom. And, and then I go on to ex to explain shackled blacks and ascension hole, the trip, trip how treacherous it was, you know. And then the problems that the slaves faced when they were here. And uh, then I ended with, uh, I don't end it, I, I come to the conclusion that Dr. King, God sent a, a leader to right the nation's wrong. And when that leader was sent, uh, the people had a hope. And it was, can't you hear, can't you hear? those freedom bells ringing. It's based on uh, uh, a lot of the uh, culture of blacks, the spirituals of blacks, uh, thrown in, of course, with a lot of melodic melodies by me, but thrown in uh, to, to make, give the idea to everyone of what the problem was, how, how limited slaves were and how treacherous they had to live. And I ended by saying God sent a leader to right the nation's wrong. And the last song is um, he had a dream and passed it on to those of us in earnest meditation to follow along up the highway through the avenues into the hearts and souls of all who will because they will that all mankind be free. I would like to give thanks to Dr. Donald Cole, the University of Mississippi, the University of Mississippi Gospel Choir, Justavian Tillman, and the Mississippi Jazz Ensemble, Dr. Michael Worthy. Uh, also, the Lafayette High School Choir, Kim Gregory, <laughs> Oxford High School Choir, Thomas Audrey, Blue Tin Harmony, Ryan Miller, especially to Brooke Worthy. Thank you so much for discovering the cantata and calling me, and I was so happy to speak with you and very happy to know of the great work that you are doing at the University of Mississippi. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.